Hey guys, today we're going to launch into Lesson 3.3, and we'll kind of linger here for a couple sets of notes. And we're going to talk about rate of change. And you'll probably recognize it to be something else, which we'll talk about in the other notes, but that's okay. So what the heck is rate of change? Sorry if you hear any noise, that's my cat playing with stuff that's on the ground, yes. So the rate of change is a ratio that describes how much one quantity changes with respect to another quantity. another quantity. So if you think back to sixth grade and we were trying to get one ratio or rate to become have reach a different number so we had a, a missing piece it's kind of what we were talking about and everything in that table would have a rate of change that was constant because we were just kind of multiplying numerator and denominator by the same number, okay? So here's what it looks like. Rate of change is actually the change in the dependent variable Variable, oh, that's terrible, let me write that again, variable, which if you remember from chapter 1 was the value y, and then that would be over the change in the independent variable. Remember, that's the one you choose which would be the x value, okay? So if we take two ordered pairs, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. So those are not, oh, sorry, I say y and I write x. These are not exponents. These are actually distinguishing one from the other, okay? They are down low. They call it a sub-number, okay? So let's take this formula again. And it says we're going to do, oops, here, I'll keep the colors the same. Go back to orange. So if it's the change in the dependent variable, means it's the change in y over the change in x, okay? And then if we use the values that uh, we have for our two ordered pairs, would be the change in y so that means to subtract over the change in x. So something I want you to notice about how I wrote this is that directly above, if you look on the left side, you've got a fraction. And they are the same color because those two numbers come from the same ordered pair. So we're talking about the y goes on top, the x on the bottom for the one ordered pair. And then for this, what comes after the subtraction symbol is going to be the second order pair shifted so that the y is on top and the x is on the bottom. Okay. Now again, I think you know this by another name, which we'll get into on another day. 
So let's do an example. So number of computer games, we're going to create a little chart. And we're going to get total cost in money, dollars. going to have one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three. So we're going to put in our values are going to be, oh, let's pull this guy. We'll do an X value under the number games and the Y value would be under the total cost. So the number of games is what I choose to purchase. And depending on how many games I bought will determine the cost. Okay. So we're going to give you some options here. Let's say I choose two games, four games, and six games. Okay. So it turns out that the cost of two games is 38, four games is 156, and six games is 234. So what we want to do is check the rate of change for each of these. And we just remember that it's going to be the change in Y. over the change in x. Okay. And so if we substitute the words in, it's going to be change in cost over over the change in the number of games. Okay. So let's see what happens when we do this. So I'm going to take the numbers two at a time and then do the math and see what we come up with. Okay, so I'm just going to go with the uh, solid colors here because there's just too, too many to try. So let's see. Let's do 156 minus 78. We're going to compare it or divide it by what I get when I subtract 4 and 2. So that's going to give me, let's see, borrow... And we get an 8 and 14, so we get 78 over 2, okay, which we're going to leave it as that ratio for the time being, even though, yes, I know we can reduce it, but just for the time's sake, leave it like that. So then let's try 234, take away 156. And say 6 divided by 2. So when we do this math, we're going to get an 8. And then 22 take away 15 is 7. Look at that. And then we're over... Uh, did I do that right? 78. And then... Oh, I did 6 over 2. It's supposed to be 6 over 4. That's why that didn't look right. 6 over 4. There we go. 6 take away 4. And we get a difference of 2. So, again, just proving out that we have a constant rate of change. And then we can go from the 234 minus the 78 over the 6 take away 2. That's what I was thinking I was working on. So 14 take away 8 is 6. 22 take away 7 is going to be 15 all over 4. That one we are going to simplify down and we're going to get 78 over 2.
Okay, so what we notice is that the rate of change is the same every time. Now I can go that extra step and take my problem and I can divide out a 2, right? And what I get would be $39 per one game. And this is what we would call the unit rate. Okay, remember that? Okay, so didn't matter what combination we did, it always came out to be the same. So we had a constant rate of change between all combinations. So it didn't matter which two y's I subtracted and their corresponding x's, the ratio was always the same, okay? Now, we do have a couple of interesting things leaning back to what we do have, did talk about before, and that's that linear function. So a linear function is going to give you a graph that's a line, so a graph of a line, that's what makes it linear. And what's interesting, based on what we just did, is that the rate of change is constant. So based on what I just shared with you, if I graphed the number of games and the total cost, it would actually come out to be a line. So then we have a different type of function, and that is called a non-linear function. So non means not, right? So it's not linear. And so the graph is not a line. Which means that we can conclude that the rate of change is not constant, okay? And that kind of makes sense. So those are the two basic types of functions, a linear function and a nonlinear function. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of practice on my next page and then call it a year, right? This is the last notes for this year. Well, 2020 here. Determine if the function is linear, and then explain. So in order for us to say yes, it is, we're going to do what we just did on the other side. We're going to look for a constant rate of change, OK? So here's our first problem. I'm going to give you just a table of values. We got 1, 4, 7, 10, and 13 under the x's, or independent variable. We'll get a negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14 in my dependent which is my y value, okay? So what we're going to do is come up with every kind of combination that we can think of. Well, we're going to be kind of side by side. So we're going to look at your 1 to 4 and negative 6 to 8. So we're going to start by subtracting, that's the change or difference, in your y's over the difference in your x's, okay? So that's going to give me negative 8 plus 6 over 3, which is negative 2 
over 3. Okay, let's try the next two. Our x's are 4 and 7, and our y's are negative 10, negative 8. So we're going to do negative 10, take away negative 8, over 7, take away 4. So let's see, that's negative 10 plus 8 over 3, which equals negative 2 over 3. Ooh, that's looking constant. And then we're going to try the 7 and 10 and negative 10 and negative 12. So negative 12 take away negative 10 over 10 take away 7. So remember, vertically, they need to be the same from the same ordered pair. And we get negative 12 plus 10 over 3, and we're going to get negative 2 over 3. So, so far, so good. So we got one more to try. It's the last two. So we're going to have negative 14 take away negative 12 over 13 take away 10. That's going to be negative 14 plus 12 over 3, and we get negative 2 over 3. So what you have to concede on, these all are the same. So we would say the function is linear. And now we're going to give a reason because the rate of change is constant. Now what we're not going to say is yes or no. That doesn't mean anything. Okay. So let's try another one. Boop. And we've got x and y. We're going to go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2. And then we're going to go 11, 15, 19, 23, 27. Okay. And let's start with the top two and see what we get. So 15 take away 11, negative 2 take away negative 3. That's going to give me a 4 on top and a 2 plus, no, a negative 2 plus a 3, which is going to give me a 1, which I can simplify down to 4. Okay? All right, next guy. Let's do the negative 2 and negative 1, the 15 and the 19. So 19 take away 15, negative 1 take away negative 2. So that's going to give me 4 over negative 1 plus 2, which is going to give me 4 over 1, which simplifies down to 4. So, so far this is looking awesome. Okay, so I'm thinking we got it. Another constant. So then we're going to go here to here. And we get 23 take away 19 over 1 take away negative 1. And so that's going to give me 4. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. Oh, bam. It looked like we were doing great here. We had 2 that matched, and then pushed, and then that's at the point I stopped. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you notice the x's, you increase by 1, increase by 1, then it increased by 2, then it increased by 1. But look at your y's. Increase by 4, increase by 4, increase by 4, increase by 4. So it was just that one spot where the x's didn't increase by the same amount, even though the y's did. So I stop right there. I don't need to do any more. And I say the function... is nonlinear. You can either say nonlinear or you can say that it is um, not linear. Same thing. The function is nonlinear because the rate of change is not constant. Looked like it was going to be, but then it ended up not. 
All right, there you go. Good luck with this, guys. We'll talk about it soon. Well, next year. Bye now.